where do you think creative energy comes from? Man, it's just in the ground or in the sky or maybe, yeah, I think maybe it comes from the sky into the ground. It's like the, you're like a lightning rod. If you got something going, you're just kind of like receiving. I don't know what it is, um, but it's uh, it's exciting. It's the most exciting thing. It is like lightning striking. <laughs> it's like the experience of it happening is it's funny because it's like orgasm or something. It's like the most exciting thing um, other than sex, or as exciting as sex. That's <laughs> some sex. Yeah. It's kind of like. I guess you ever heard that Japanese or one of the the Eastern creation stories? It's like God masturbated the. This is not not good for the camera, but like God orgasmed the world into. It's like there is a a big connection between like. It's all. It all seems like it's kind of like part of the same thing. Like this this energy, like whether you channel it for like you know whatever you channel it for 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 sex or for creating music or for or for dreaming like it seems like they're all kind of part of the same thing but it's like like how, how do you, what do you think about like do you think that dreaming and creativity are part of the same thing like in ima imagination or do you think they're kind of separate mechanisms well i know peter run says he when he flies overseas and you know arrives in england or something from the us he invariably writes something soon after he arrives. He says it's because he's, he thinks it's because he's awake during the time he's normally dreaming. And so maybe, you're right, maybe it is like dreaming and, and uh, creativity are, maybe dreaming is, is creativity. Because you're kind of distracted. You're not conscious. Uh, but your mind is going. It's kind of weird. Like, that's... Uh, for me, it, you never know what's gonna, when it's gonna hit. When you get an idea, and it's all—it's sort of like a—it's like a door unlocks, and all of a sudden you see a picture there that you hadn't seen before. It's organized in a way you hadn't been able to organize it. And uh, I know that I'm always working on observing things and trying to learn. And then every once in a while, I, I find a thing that kind of puts it all together—a way, a way in. And it's like, a, like I say, like a door opens, and then I can just kind of go there. And, you know, the good writers and artists, I suppose, uh, scientists that are inventing things, they, or discovering things, they probably just look at it, you know, I've heard stories about them being at a stoplight, and then just all of a sudden they realize the connections between things. Just, it's random. But because they've worked at observing, they're able to put something together. I mean, there's there's a lot of work that goes into fleshing out creativity. That's all I'm saying. It's not just uh, it doesn't just come fully formed. I think, I mean, I think it it does it does show itself uh, some sort of beautiful thing or true thing shows itself to you, uh, and you can do your best to describe it. And uh, it's like when you're finally ready to see the sunset and enjoy the colors in it. Uh, a lot of days go by, you, you go, you just look over and see it, and go, oh yeah, I gotta go and do something. But you're, when you're finally ready to look at that, then you see all this beauty in it, and that's kind of what creativity is. When you're finally ready to notice things, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because it's like when you're when you're into it, boy, you'll see layers and you'll see colors. You'll be like, oh my god, and like sometimes you just be like, oh, pretty cool. On, on about your business. It's like an angle or a, an equation that hits right or a, a certain frequency of your mind or of the, the cosmos. You just happen to be standing in the right place at the right time. And uh, and what's interesting about like art, the stuff that I, that I like the most, it seems so... A lot of times it'll seem so idiosyncratic or sort of peculiar to the person that made it their own personal detail will be in there and uh, it's all about very specific things and yet it's so attuned to a certain subject that it reveals the whole world in it like the whole of the universe just kind of there in this little painting of an Indian or something 
It's amazing. <laughs> it is. It is like the uh, the microcosm, you know, emerges out of you know the idiosyncrasy or, or whatever it is. W one thing I I notice about you is that you, you seem to be very calm and and it seems like that might work really well because like your your it seems like your your mind is working all the time you know perceiving and framing and and being curious and stuff like that do you think that that um do you find any differences like when you're working in a creative flow like when you're do you feel it it, it helps to to kind of be like calm and, and collected and like when you're working with it well uh it is really true that I, 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 I can't really be writing, like as a songwriter, it's really difficult to write when there's so much going on, and I need to sort of schedule enough time where everything comes to a complete stop. And it might take several days, you know, over a couple, to really get into the rhythm of things. It's like the distractions go away, and you're and you twiddle your thumbs for a while, and then all of a sudden things start falling out. And it's all stuff you've sort of pre-organized in your head as you went along observing and learning, but then it, it organizes itself and it kind of, just kind of falls out. It finally, finally coalesces. It, it sort of, it does take that calm. You know, uh, I guess the, the Buddhists, they talk about the, like the pebble in the lake, you know, if it's the waves of, like if you throw a pebble in a very calm lake, the waves uh, just spread out real evenly, and you can sort of perceive them. But if you throw it into a, a lake that's storm-tossed, or the ocean or something, you can't see any effect. So I guess that calmness is represents, you know, is represented in that still lake. And something, you put something in, and then the waves come back at you, and you maybe are able to gather something from them. I don't know. It seems like there are a lot of parallels between like creative energy and flow and water. Yeah, water is uh, water is good. I like to stand by the stream uh, or the ocean, and it's just uh, I don't know. Water's uh, just natural water is something of fascination. I was supposed to anyone. I think any any human or any any living thing. I'm sure that plant over there is fascinated by water when it comes down in its own way. Seems so like, so I don't know. I think water. Yeah, I think water is kind of nature is uh, is creativity uh, manifested in general. It's just you know this whole thing about intelligent design and stuff and uh, versus Darwinism. You know the debate is interesting, but. I, I think it's kind of random, the, the creation. It's like, and it's, it all ends up saying a similar thing, which is we're in this together, kind of, and we're, you know, we're doing the best we can to get somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but it is, it, it seems to be, if there's a design, it's to let everything happen spontaneously. <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. And to preserve this mystery of like and yeah, the mystery is um, is always there's always mystery behind behind any observation. You know, when they when the scientists find a new definition, like they came up with a was that new thing they came up with the oh the Higgs boson Higgs -boson or Bof God particle boson, or whatever boson, yeah yeah the yeah Higgs boson element or particle or whatever it is that is supposed to explain everything. Everything's held together by the Higgs boson. Well, they'll find elements of that that are mysterious behind it, even if they prove it. They sort of have, think they've proved it, and yet, so what? They prove it, there's always more to learn. And that's where the creativity is, I guess, is in that mystery. Because they thought the atom was the smallest thing, and yeah. then they said, well, all this other stuff in there, too, and now here's, a, here's really the smallest thing. And, and uh, so... Um, now, that's where the scientists and the... And the and the um, the religious uh, thinker or philosophizer uh, that's where they meet, I'd say, with that mystery. Yeah, I think that dreams are so mysterious. 
Like, to me, it's just so... It's such a profound, like, big deal that this huge psychedelic experience happens to everyone every night. Um, you ever get inspiration from your dreams? Like, download songs or images or symbols or anything like that? Sometimes I get some stuff. <clears throat> They're usually things that are preposterous, you know, for the dreams. And uh, I don't often stop to analyze them. But uh, every once in a while they they intrigue me. I can't think of one right now that is like that. But Do you ever wake up in your dreams, like, lucidly? Ever... Yeah, I wake up <clears throat> and I go back. I try to go back into them. I refuse to let, let them go. And then I, I'm not sure I um, ever get back to them. I try to keep them going. Because I, I try to resolve this incongruous, uh, preposterous situation, usually. And when I finally really wake up, I realize, well, that's, if it was a troubling one, I usually, I realize the lesson of that dream might be that this would never, ever happen. And, um, that, you know, and if it did, here's how I would just nip it in the butt. I don't know. That's not, it doesn't, I'm not seeing an answer to your question from that. About creativity, it is it is something random. We're all affected by everything that goes on around us, I suppose. And uh, <clears throat> those dreams, those things kind of build up, and maybe they release in dreams. Yeah, yeah. The frustrations, the 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 pain, and the maybe the mystery of the world. You know. You seem. Um, I look at you know folks like yourself, and you know. All the, you know, it's, you're definitely right, right, you know, at the top of the ranks of the the singers and songwriters in country music, folk music, bluegrass music, whatever. I look at I look at folks like that as being. I mean, this is kind of like a. Um, I think that the singers and and songwriters. Are like I'm trying to I'm trying to say this without without this, without it seeming weird because there's like spiritual leaders like people who are singing the songs who are writing the songs are affecting people and lots of people in a major deep way that people are intonating with their frequency with their with their like it's like your soul comes up with this thing and then people intonate with that spiritually and so to me that's like a anyway so um do you do you feel like you, you consider yourself a spiritual person, like? Well, I try to I try to pay attention to the spirit in the, in the, in the sort of the common bond that all of us have, and uh, the and that and the, the common experience of this mysterious life we lead. <clears throat> but I think mostly what what artists do and cre- creative people do is they they organize things that in a way that people see things they already kind of know intuitively. They sort of see them in a concrete way for, or experience them in a concrete way briefly. And um, it's nothing new. It's never really anything new. It's more like it's something that's always been there and we've sort of always known it's there and then we stop, like I say, we're finally ever able to appreciate that sunset or the way that flower looks or the way that stream moves or the way that string sounds, you know. And uh, the way that situation is in your life, if it's a lyrical uh, uh, thing with words, you know. And the songs, as a songwriter, you're you're mixing media, you're mixing sound and uh, rhythm, harmony with poetry in some way. And uh, you know, some of the writers write stuff that you don't understand is really ne- not necessarily meant to be concretely defined. And it's just a way of taking people away. We kind of... One thing that's interesting about human beings is they like... They like this stuff. They like to see somebody's idea of organizing these things um, as a pastime, as a sort of a, as a break from the everyday. And then, ironically, what the, the artists tend to do is they tend to organize it in a way that's you know they see what's what's normal about it or what's real or what's true or what's what they've all already known you know 
and uh, <clears throat> it's interesting. Like the so the people are cra they're they're craving that. I suppose like there's all these uh, like if you go to the Folk Alliance, there's all these singer songwriters. There's so many of them, and they all have something a little bit something to offer to the fan of that kind of thing. And I think I'm trying to I've tried to figure out what it is that draws people to it because some of the songs are not so good some of the singers are not that great player singers or players and yet there's something there that draws people in because I guess they want to see what creative people do and they're 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 dying for it themselves I'd say and I think there's an awful lot of, of our pastime or our you know day-to-day -day stuff that's not creative and if we don't feed that we feel deficient and I think um, that's where those of us that play and sing, even if we're not originals, you know, not making original music, uh, we're serving some needed, uh, you know, deficiency in people's lives. Kind of a new, a creative, nutritional vitamin. Yeah, uh, like a vitamin. <laughs> What what advice would you have to give anybody who was you know a young young man or young woman who's just kind of starting to investigate their own creativity? Um, something you might tell them to kind of help them or kind of loosen them up or clue them into to something that's helped you a lot. You know the practice of it is uh, the practice of trying to unlock that creativity is. It's just as mysterious as anything, I guess. And it's kind of... I, I suppose a lot of it is trial and error, and you have to just uh, have faith. That's the first thing. You have to have faith that there is something you can do. And then you have to put your attention on it, basically. If you if you want to write music or want to paint or um, study the cosmos and figure things out that no one else did, you just have to just put your attention on it and keep looking at it from every angle. And um, and it's okay to have a blank page, you know, or a blank, you know, an unrecorded piece of tape if you're trying to get somewhere. It's okay as long as you sort of took the time. It sort of points you, it starts pointing you in a direction. And if you keep doing it, it's just it's like anything else. It's like you gotta, it's like fishing. You just gotta put a lot of lines out, and keep watching. Them. And if they don't work, try another hole. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, this is really cool. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to sit down here and, and talk about this stuff. Um, um, I just have a couple more things that, that might I'd like to ask. Um, who around town kind of uh, pings on your creative radar as someone who appeals to your personal sensibility like as a creator? Well, um... As a songwriter, uh, Daryl Scott's one who just really seems to tap into the stuff that I'm, I'm concerned about. Or uh, he plays the kind of music I want to hear. He plays the he, he talks about things that I understand, and but he but he broadens it. John Prine's another one. Um, Greg Brown, a great one. And those guys talk about everyday life, all of them, and they kind of peck through it into some way that reveals something more uh, than just you know the drudgery of day to day stuff. It's, it's, it's beautiful, and just a little phrase will just uh, just just knock you out. In this town, there's a lot of people, you know... I was reading uh, Joseph Campbell again the other day, and he talked about uh, there's two kinds of art. There's art you can use to accomplish something. Uh, like like you would... He, say, he says there, you can approach making a turkey dinner in an artful way, so you want to feed people and give them pleasure. And then there's art that you do just for no other reason than you want to do art. And uh, I think that somebody like Prine or Greg Brown or, or Daryl, they're not really they're not really trying to sell records or they just have these things that, that intrigue them and they just have to do it. Um, Kate McLeod, I produced a record on her. She's from Salt Lake. And she's that way. She said, well, you know, I just have to write these and I really like them. I don't. I don't know if it matters if anyone else likes them, and so that's good. I think that's uh, that's a good way to think about it. I mean, I, I appreciate like music, for instance. It's a craft. It's an art. It's a, both things. And there's so many ways it, 
there's so many purposes for it. And uh, the real art part would be, I guess, just to inspire the wonder and the mystery like you were talking about. Whereas some of us for dancing, some of us for lit, uh, for uh, instruction, some you know for uh, you know like some of the you know, uh, union songs are for you know hey let's let's work towards this cause or religious songs are to uh, get people sort of to maybe in some ways get in line sometimes some some gospel music or to, and sometimes it's just pleasure just to give pleasure and that's uh, they're all noble I think all noble pursuits. But the real thing is that mystery, and you just do it because it's it's calling. I love Campbell. He's really he's really onto some stuff. Um, do you uh, um, would you be comfortable sharing maybe like something that you might consider like a spiritual experience that had an impact on your either creativity or the way you perceive the world? Well, uh, seeing the birth of my kids was, uh, both of them was, was, a, was an awesome thing where you felt like you were really part of a continuum and a mysterious, uh, again, a mysterious endeavor, whatever this life that people live is and the planet and everything. I don't know what it really is, what it's for. But, but you, you, you sort of see yourself in it, in a place that's, um, that's timeless. Uh, and the same with, with death. Birth and death are, the, are sort of the borders of our experience. And uh, we're in the middle of it watching this. And we realize we're we're being born and we're dying at the same time. We're, you know, there's not much between us and the, that little baby and that old person that's dying. And um, that, to me, birth and death are, are sort of supreme. They are great resets, sort of reboot the basic idea of life. <laughs> yeah, without without any need or supposition or consideration of religion that's just real spiritual like you know like animation and recycling or, or whatever or you know where does it go you know who knows more mis- more mystery that's your maybe, yeah you know. where does it come from where does it go cotton eye joke that's basically the thing <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it